Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Whispering Hope Daily Lesson Study Review here with us. This week, we are studying the tithing contract, the tithing contract. And our lesson for this morning, Monday morning, is where is the storehouse? But before we go into our discussion, we'll invite Elder Edson Joseph to do our opening prayer, and then Elder Vaughn will read our memory text. Let us assume a posture of prayer. Eternal God and our Father, we just want to thank you again for waking us up this morning. We want to thank you for the blessings of life. Lord, as we are about to look into your word, we pray that your spirit will be very present here with us, that will guide us into all truth. Enlighten our minds and give us thoughts, clear thoughts, that we will be able to bless others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our memory text comes from Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It's from the New King James Version. And it says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to go into our text. Before we go into our discussion, we're going to look at our text and we're going to ask beginning with elder joseph elder von joseph he's going to tell us what are some insights he gets from our memory text this week and elder edson joseph will follow after all right so the memory text is one that i'm familiar with and perhaps most of us are familiar with it within these circles malachi 310 it is basically a command and a bless a pronouncement of a blessing the, the command is for us to bring all of the tithes into the storehouse of God and so when we do that God is making giving us an invitation even to try him and he's going to open up the windows of heaven he's going to open up the floodgates so that we can be blessed tremendously perhaps even as the text says that we cannot receive it so for me, that text is impregnated with a lot of stuff. And I know stuff is not a good word, but it's impregnated with, it's a command, it's a promise, it's an invitation to have God work on your behalf, to see the mighty wondrous works of God, and to demonstrate the love of Christ for all of us. Because he's saying, I just want to bless you so much, but do this for me. Show that you love me back, and all these are for you. That's my insight into that text, Sister Joe. Okay, as I look into the text, the memory text for this morning, I have gleaned it from a new perspective. In the fact that I'm learning in this quarter study that you cannot return a tide unless you have already been blessed by God. So what I presume God to be saying in this particular text, that after I have blessed you and you have brought back my part of the blessing that you have received, I'm going to bless you even more. And that is, you have to bring it with an open mind without grudgingly or sparingly. You're going to bring all of it because you're so excited that I've blessed you. And then once you've done that, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And so I, that has got me thinking, but I'm sure we're going to get some answers as we go into the list this one. Amen. Now, based on our topic for this morning, we're not really focusing on the blessings because, you know, when we hear this text, people focus on the blessing and how important it is to give your time. But our lesson this morning is focusing on where our money goes. Where is the storehouse? So looking at our memory text, Malachi 3 verse 10, we'll begin with Elevon again. You're going to tell us what can we learn from this verse about where our tithe goes, and then Elder Joseph will follow right after again. All right, where does our tithe go? Where should it go? Where does God say it should be brought? And he says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. So our topic for today, Monday, is exactly talking about that. Where is the storehouse? Because this, Sister Joe, is uh, a topic of some controversy in Christendom and, and even within our, our denomination. And so God is saying to bring it into the storehouse and then it, he qualifies it or, or he adds to it. And he says 
that there may be food in my house. So for me, my understanding is that the storehouse is the house of God. It's where individuals or his group of people, his remnant church, those that are of Christ that come to worship him. And not just the physical location, but the, the movement, so to speak, the organization, that spirit-led movement of God, the headquarters, the capstone of that movement for it to have finances and resources to propagate the gospel, to spread the word of God, to enlarge the kingdom of God. So God is saying to bring your tithe to the storehouse, that his house may have food. And so in the local context, we're talking about the storehouse being the local church, and it is then dispersed or disseminated to, depending on the structure of, of where you are, to the conference or to the union, to the general conference in our context. So therefore, that organization, that body, that movement, that faith-based group will have resources that they can continue to propagate the gospel of Christ. And it can lend towards, as we studied, uh, as we will study in days to come, about those who will benefit from the return of God's time. After Elder Vaughn, who was so eloquently done that, so he dealt with the local aspect of where the storehouse is, and that the storehouse is where the Levite actually ministered, which is the temple, which is the church. That is where we take our tithes when we go back. Uh, but I wanted to put it in a spiritual context, a more deeper application as well, because in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21, God had Jesus had instructed them that, you know, why lay up treasures in this world where mud and rust don't come up? But it says, lay it up where no thief can enter or break through. And so when we give to the ministry, as Elder Vaughan rightly said, it gives, it blesses others. Others are brought to the gospel because of the ministers, those who labor in the temple or on behalf of the temple and God. Others are drawn to Christ. They are persons who, the indigent and the less fortunate, who will be blessed because of the type that we have returned to God. And so we are not only, only laying it up in the physical storehouse, which is the general application, but in the spiritual application now, we are also laying up in God's storehouse in heaven. God is not in need of any material thing because he said, what? I own everything. Everything belongs to me. So why do we worry about where the offering goes? Just take it to where God instructs us to take it and let him bless us. Amen. Very valid point. Now we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to turn into our Bibles, turning to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Verses 5 to 14, we'll ask Elder Joseph to read verses 5 to 9, and Elder Vaughn will read 10 to 14, 5 to 9, Elder Joseph Edson, and then Elder Vaughn will read 10 to 14, and after which I will ask the question. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes, to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall he seek. And thither thou shalt come, and thither shall ye bring your burnt offering, and your sacrifice, and your tithes, and your heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your free will offering, and your first things of your herds, and your flocks. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your household, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For ye are not as yet come unto the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God Give it 
you. Verse 10 says, but I'm reading from the New King James Version. He says, but when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about so that you dwell in safety, then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levite who is within your gates, since he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which the Lord chooses, in one of your tribes, there you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command you. Amen. And our question, and we'll begin with Elder Edson Joseph this time, and then Elder Vaughan will come after. Our question says, these verses do not indicate that God's children could use their own discretion as to where their tithe was deposited. What principles can we take from these verses for ourselves today? Very interesting question because, you know, today persons would ask the question, why does God want our money? Well, the money is not really ours, and that's one of the first concept that's wrong with the, the question. And then some persons would say that I could do better than what the church is doing with the money. It's best I help someone who is indigent, who is less fortunate with the money. But God is specific here when speaking, when the instruction that Moses is given is very strict and that we must, they must return it. And what we have to look at, the backdrop as to why Moses is saying this. Moses, as we discovered last week, I think it was Elder Brown in last Monday's lesson, who made mention of it, is that Moses have here now a young congregation of believers. They didn't come out except for Joshua and Caleb out of Egypt. They grew up in the wilderness, among the murmuring, the, the complaining. And Moses was their leader. And he was saying to them, the instruction that God has given him from the answer, keep the commandments and make sure that you return a faithful time. Not only a faithful time, but it went on to say all those offerings, that you, those that you pledge, those that are your free will offering, those that are whatever heave offerings, all the different offerings that are part of the culture, the customs that we have. Remember to return them when you go over into the land of Canaan. And there's no ambiguity about where you are to return it. They are to return it to the storehouse. And there were different chambers because it's not like today we are taking a card and you put it in a machine and you deposit what you're supposed to be depositing or you're taking cash. There were food kind, there were animal kind that was being brought. And so they had different chambers at the storehouse to be able to absorb all these things. But whatever it was, it had to be taken to the storehouse where God, the priests, and the Levites, the Levites would officiate. So what we see here is that one principle I see coming out in this is that we ought to, once God speaks in a very clear and direct way, once we understand the will of God, we have got to act on the will of God. And as Elder Edson said, it was very clear, it was pellucid as to where they ought to return their tithe and their offerings. And it was very specific. And he said, beware that you don't do it anywhere that you please. Because God is not asking for you to do it any way you please. He's asking for a specific way. So we've got to realize that when God gives directives, when God asks us, when he says in his word, and it is very clear, I mean, sometimes God may speak in what people term as maybe dark speech where it's not that clear for us to understand. You got to agitate a little bit more or agonize a little bit more with the Holy Spirit to understand what it is. And you may have several different doctrines or understanding coming up, but in a very clear way in which God speaks in this way, 
God is saying to them to take it to the storehouse. And we're talking about today about where's the storehouse. And it was very, very clear. And so when we get that, we've got to act upon it. And even at times, you know, uh, Sister Joe, when, when we don't see it clearly, we have got to trust God enough. God, I don't really see where this is going. I, I, I can't see it because we don't always see it or understand it. I don't see it, God. But you know what? Because you are God and I know who you are, I'm going to trust you. That you say to put it here or you say to go there or to do this. I'm going to trust you and have faith in you, oh God, because I know your character and I believe in you. And so it's not a case where some people may say it's blind faith. Because it's God who sees and knows everything and God has view over everything. He knows the beginning from the end. And so once we put our trust in him, when he says it in his word, then we have faith in God and we act upon that faith. Amen. So as elders, both of you being elders in your respective churches, I'm pretty sure you've heard questions on the validity of tithing and if we should be tithing. So now I'm going to ask you this question. We'll begin with Elder Joseph, Elder Edson Joseph again, and then Elder Vaughn after. Is tithing a requirement for the Jews or for all Christians? Tithing is a requirement for God's people. Uh, that's how I would put it. It's a requirement for everyone because God blesses you, but more specifically for Christians. If you want to say it for Jews, let's for argument's sake, because I'm probably going a different angle than Elder Vaughan, is that the Bible, Paul himself says that if we are born again, that we are of Abraham's seed. And if we are of Abraham's seed, then theoretically speaking, we are spiritual Jews. And so once we are called by the name of God, we would be required to pay tithing. Now, it is what tithing is required. Before there was a Jew, Abraham offered, because if we know the nation of Israel came after they had Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. But even when Abraham left the earth of the Chaldeans, when he won that victory, Abraham returned tight to Melchizedek. And then we could go as far back as, and as Genesis that Jesus asked them to, to render of their first fruits back then. So what I'm saying basically is tithing is binding upon all Christians. Whether you're a New Testament Christian, whether you're Jew, whether you are anyone. Once God bless you, that blessing God wants you to keep nine-tenths of it, and he wants you to return the part that he has commissioned you to, the tenth of what you have as your increase. That's my simple answer. All right. Well, you know, um, Edson Joseph hit the nail on the head in that it is, in fact, not only for a specific race or religion. God is the owner of everything. We've got to remember that God created mankind. God did not create Jews and Gentiles and classify and sectorize and have these human constructs of these different things. In man, in Adam, was all of mankind. So whether you see somebody who's short and has slanted eyes or somebody who's tall and dark and has kinky hair or whatever else, they all came, we all came out. The Word of God says in the New Testament, remember which text, it says that he has made of one blood all nations of this world. We are all connected to Adam, and so God created mankind. It is not just for the Jews, because as Elder, Elder Joseph just said, that we had prior to the Levitical system, prior to there was ever a Jewish nation, we see tithe being returned, tithe being given to God by Abraham. And even Jacob himself, before you know, he became Israel, and before he, he had the, the 12 sons and so on, we see him there saying, I'm going to give a tent to God when he had that experience with the ladder going up and down to heaven. And so there is a distinction in the Old Testament, and I don't know if the lessons coming further in the week are going to look at that, 
but there's a distinction between the two different tides which were not into perpetuity, which were not to continue. There was a tide that King Saul chose or instituted when he became king of Israel, Saul being the first king of Israel, where he's going to tax the people and take a 10% of them. And there was also another tide, which is called the second tide, which was just for a time given by Moses for those people in the nation of Israel, which ended when Israel as a nation ended and the gospel went to the Gentiles. But the ministerial tide, the ministerial tide, which is the tide for the propagation of the gospel of Christ and to spread the word of God, that is for a perpetuity. It's to continue. And that is it that is continuing today, not for the children of Israel only, but for all mankind to say how gracious, how loving they are to God, how obedient they are to give back to him what he has asked. And therefore, he pronounced blessings. And if you don't, he pronounced curses. It's for us to choose, but it's for all mankind. Amen. So our next question is a two-part question, and we're going to divide it among our panelists this morning. Our question starts by saying, imagine if everyone decided to give their tithe to whomever they wanted to at the expense of the Adventist church itself. Now, the first question we're going to ask Elder Edson Joseph, what would happen to our church? What would happen to our church if everyone decided they would give their money to whomever? Uh, I, I'd ask you the question, uh, Sister Moderator, what would happen if everyone in Antigua decided not to pay their tax or everyone in the U.S. of A or in Jamaica or in Trinidad? Or uh, in some parts of the world decided that we are not paying any tax. The road in front of my house needs to be patched. I'm going to buy a few aggregates and I'm going to buy some cement and I'm going to pave it. And that's my contribution. It's the tax anyway because it's working to build up infrastructure. How would the ministers work? How would the public servants get paid? You know, and so it is the same thing with the church. If we do not return, the church will financially suffer. There will be no organs in the church to play because we couldn't afford to buy one. There would not be any preachers to preach the word. All the elders would have to work. They work every day and still go back to plan out the services of the church and to execute it and could not ask themselves to be excused because the work would be so demanding upon them. The church cannot run without whether it be first tidy or second tidy, it's a good point that the board made as well. You know, and or your offering, that offering that you give as free will. You know, the church requires all these things to function. And then we have auxiliary organizations like the schools, the hospitals, that are people who are also engaged in ministry. And the tide also goes to pay. So as an institution, we would have failed as a physical structured organization would have failed but you know the work of god cannot fail because god has ways and means of accomplishing his task amen so elder Vaughan, with that in mind why then is that practice such a bad idea and contrary to or to scripture all right well i think elder edson pretty much said what would happen and he also said <laughs> that that practice would be you know detrimental towards the the organization it is contrary to scripture because here is it that you have a movement and the movement is of god and you have certain principles and guidelines like any other organization or movement and you have certain principles and in a spiritual organization you have doctrines and you have you know again principles it cannot be that for those who are preaching or teaching or leading other men and women down a different path contrary to how you see it or from the biblical account that you understand it that you would then in this organization uh, give your support and finances and resources to some other organization that is teaching contrary to the word of God, it doesn't make any sense. So it is not scriptural. When God says bring it to the storehouse, he's talking about the storehouse of his according to your understanding and belief. Because I don't see 
individuals or a whole group of people giving their resources to some other institution which is clearly going contrary to the beliefs and the words of God. And so here is it that it is not scriptural to do so and we've got to recognize that when God says bring it to the storehouse which we're talking about today, the storehouse means in our context the church or the denomination in which we are serving. I mean, anyone can do anything anytime. You can go to whatever other denomination of Christianity or other religion or whatever else you want to do. But if you are part of God's remnant church, God's organization, and you believe that it is, then you ought to support it so that you can propagate the gospel. We're not talking about propagating den denominationalism here or church or having a franchise. We're talking about a belief faith system in which you believe what is being taught is from the word of God. You have faith in those who are leading and back then it was the Levites, but now it's, you have pastors and presidents and so on and so forth. And you want to support that because you believe in your heart from the word of God that this is preaching the word of God, the truth, and you want to continue to propagate it by assisting with your resources, your finances, etc. Amen, indeed. And that has brought us to the end of our discussion this morning. But before we wrap up, we cannot leave without our takeaways. So we're going to begin with Elder Edson Joseph, and Elder Vaughn will wrap up for us. What are your takeaways from our lesson this morning? My takeaway from today's lesson is very simple, I would say, is that God is a particular God. He's specific, just as he said to King Saul, you know, when you go to AI, kill everything. King Saul thought that, well, look, I could bring back some fat, nice-looking goat, sheep, and we could offer them a sacrifice because they're looking much better. But God is specific. God said he wants us to return a tent, which is our tithe, and he's specific. All of it should be returned. And we don't return it to places that we choose or we think. We return it to the storehouse where the ministers, the Levites, in quotation mark, minister on behalf of God and proclaim the good news. So if I go to Jenin Seventh-day Adventist Church, if I go to Ephesus Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica or in New York, I, with our Mount of Blessing or Bethel or yeah, whichever church I attend to, I take my tithe there because there's where God said I'm supposed to return it into his storehouse. And I cannot take God's tithe and do as I please with it. And so that is my takeaway from today's lesson. All right. So I think that the message is clear from the passage of scripture that we read today that God has been and always is specific about where his storehouse is. I mean, it is the house of God. And the purpose of the tithe, which will be looked at in other lessons for this week, is to propagate the gospel for ministerial support. And so we have got to support the ministers of the gospel, those who we believe are preaching truth to the word of God and practicing so, so that indeed that can continue. We don't want to give support to a false preaching or false theology or other faith groups which are going contrary to the word of God or following the commandments of man or what have you. God expects us to propagate the truth and we bring it to the storehouse, to the local church, to the district, to the conference and the general conference and we give it to God and it's a trust that we have in God. We trust in him. We believe in him that he's going to make this return of tide go to the propagation of the word of God. And so we continue to do so because we, by doing so, we have a faith-based relationship with God. And we trust in him. And it helps us to be uh, strong in God in that we can believe in him even when returning God's tide is going to take a big hit on your resources. God still comes true for us because he has promised to bless us when we do so. That's my takeaway for today. Amen. And that has brought us to the end of our discussion. We are happy that you could have joined us this morning as we discuss 
the where our storehouse is and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when we will discuss the purpose of tithing we hope that you'd share the link with a family or friend and we hope to see you tomorrow six o'clock bright and early see you then